Yo, what's up guys, Impl7 here, and today I'm bringing you guys into video, and in this video I'm going to be finishing off my Fazbear Fright story. So, a few days ago, I uploaded the video where I read you guys half my Fazbear Fright story, the music box, which was for Ozone's competition, and I'm going to finish it off. So we're on page 7 now, There, there's still 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So, we're going to finish it off today, and yeah, quick recap. Eric, he's just a kid that nobody really likes, but he loves it at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza because, like, uh, he was, like, accepted for who he was there, and he's, yeah, but nobody really likes him, and the girl he likes is Charlotte, obviously a reference to Charlotte in the games, and technically is Charlotte in the games, but just in this, my universe, I guess. Anyway, so... Uh, at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, this is taking place during Lonely Freddy and after Lonely Freddy. So basically, he, um, he was talking to Charlotte, she, she ate chocolate, she threw up, went outside, threw up more. This is, this is kind of like what happened in Lonely Freddy. So then he starts talking to her, they end up, um, bonding in a way, and then, Eric goes inside while she stays outside, then William shows up and murders her, pretty much. Then the puppet comes outside to try to save her, then, um, then it malfunctions because of the rain, and it, and then it just merges with her, basically. That's basically where we are now, and now Eric's going outside. So, yeah, now let's go on to page 7. As soon as he was able to, whoops. As soon as he was able to keep himself from gagging, he got on his knees. A tear rolled down his face. Then another, then another, and another. If I didn't leave, it wouldn't have happened. Eric blamed himself for this. He had to admit it. He couldn't deny it. That would just be lying to himself. This was all his fault. Pretty soon, a river was pouring out of Eric's eyes. William Afton did this. But then something happened. Er something Eric couldn't have explained if he tried. Eric realized he had been staring for the past five minutes and turned his head to face away from him, the body. He couldn't stand to look at it anymore. But as it, turned, but as it turned out, looking away hadn't been much better. Mere seconds after he looked away, a pale white face appeared in front of Eric. But it wasn't a friendly looking face. This face had a big wide grin with lipstick above and below the mouth. Its mouth was gaping open, and inside were no teeth. Either side of the smile was a large red dot, almost like a blushed face. Its eyes were dark and empty. Below the eyes were dark bluish-purple streams. They looked like thick tear tracks. Obviously, this is the puppet. How did this thing look so happy when it was crying? Eric could see in his peripher peripherals that the face had a dark black body to accompany it. But Eric couldn't look directly at this body. His eyes couldn't move. He was stuck st staring at this terrifyingly ugly face. He didn't want to look at it. He tried closing his eyes to keep himself from staring into those dark, empty eye sockets. But it didn't work. He couldn't look away. He couldn't move. He was powerless to do anything. Eric's eyes started to dry up. He was stuck standing there for what felt like hours until the monster's eyes lit up. No longer were they empty eye sockets. They were lit up with a bright white light. Eric's dry eyes started to become painful. He wanted so badly to be able to close his eyes, but this monster wouldn't let him. Suddenly, the horrific face dissipated, but Eric still could not move. He, he still couldn't close his eyes. Even now that the happily crying face was gone, his eyes were still fixed on something terrifying. Across the street ahead of him was a dark, shadowy figure. It seemed to have four teeth on his top jaw and at least six on the bottom row, but it looked like there may have been even more than that. Eric couldn't tell what its body was shaped like. Other than those glowing white teeth and eyes, Eric could only see large round shapes above them. Were those rabbit ears? It reminded him of one of the animatronics inside, but the positioning of the parts he could see seemed to be different from the real robot. Can you guys guess who this is? Basically, what I did for the lore in this book 
I base it on theories that I believe. So I put Shadow Bonnie here because I believe that Charlotte has some connection to Shadow Bonnie. Okay? It's just a theory, by the way. You don't have to believe it. It's just a theory. But that, I just added that in for the lore in this book. And because I, I wanted there to be some lore hints. Because, like, it's not a Fazbear Fright story without them. So, yeah. It... It, um, before Eric had the chance to figure out what this was, the happily sad creature appeared in front of Eric and pushed him, launching him until he hit his back hard against the outer brick wall of the Freddy's building. The area on the ground he landed on had no trash bags to cushion his fall, and so when he landed, his leg bent unnaturally. Eric was sure it had broken. He screamed out in pain. He couldn't move. But he knew he had to. He had to stop William Afton. Afton was the one who murdered Charlotte. He knew. And he had to stop him before the police got involved. And so, he mustered enough courage to move his leg. No matter how much it hurt, he had to get up. It felt like he was going to pass out from the pain. Eric grabbed Charlotte's hand and started to pull her closer to him. He grabbed a few trash bags to cover her up her body so it wouldn't be found until Eric had found Afton. He knew it wasn't the smartest thing to do, but who would believe him unless he got proof? He pulled Charlotte even closer until she was right next to the wall and right next to him. But he was sorry he did that. Charlotte's body moved. She's alive, Eric thought. But no, this was not her waking up and rejoining the world of the living. Charlotte sat up and stared at Eric. Then she grabbed his leg and twisted and scratched it. Eric screamed louder than he'd ever screamed in his life. He grabbed the knife lying on the ground next to him. He had no choice but to grab it and, stabbed sh and stab Charlotte. He had to protect himself. Charlotte didn't seem to be alive anyway, but rather seemed to be acting like a zombie. Great. Now Eric's fingerprints were on the murder weapon. He had to find William quickly before he got arrested and charged for her murder himself. But it was already too late. Eric heard police sirens coming towards Freddy's. Hands where I can see them, Officer Larson yelled. It's not Detective Larson, by the way, this is his father. Since this is a different universe, I'm making it so that Larson's father was a police officer. Also, that, kind of, that part of his story was kind of left open-ended, so why not do that? Anyway, but when the officer realized Eric was covered in blood laying next... Uh, sorry. Officer Larson yelled at Eric, but when the officer realized Eric was covered in blood laying next to a dead body, he lowered his gun. Eric, he sounded concerned. What have you done? I know what it looks like, but I didn't do it. Even if that's true, you have to come with me. Eric couldn't keep away the thought that his life was over. He was about to be sentenced to prison for the rest of his life for a crime he didn't commit. What could he do? Eric. Larson walked by Eric's cell and began to speak with him. You have no idea how bad I want this to have been a min misunderstanding. My son knows you. He's friends with your brother. Please, don't, don't have let them down with this. Who is your son? Eric wasn't sure who Larson's son was. Everett. He's friends with Brandon. Everett is the name of uh, Detective Larson from the Citra stories, and Brandon is actually the name of the f of Jake's friend. But we don't know much about Brandon, so I was like, hey, why not make Eric Brandon's brother? Because, like, certain parts of certain characters are kind of left open-ended, so why not do whatever you want with them, you know? Okay, so, Eric remembered Everett coming over to his house many times in the past. He had always wanted to be a police officer just like his dad. Or more, or more specifically, he wanted to be a good detective. He wanted to be a detective. Dwayne Larson was a good cop. Eric was sure of it. But he also had the feeling that Everett could have grown up to be a great detective. I believe in you, Eric. You're a good kid. I know you are. Eric appreciated those words, but he wasn't sure the law would agree with them. Thanks. He said the word in an upset-sounding tone. He didn't know what to think of himself. He was locked in a cell because he su suspected of murder. Eric is only 14 years old. How could a kid his age even be, even be capable of something like this? Eric hung his head in shame. He turned around to lay down on his bed, but what he saw against the wall sent shivers down his spine. On the other side of the cell was a massive music box, but it was wide open. Above it were chains holding something up against the wall. What it was holding up was the happy-looking sad clown doll he'd seen back at Freddy's. 
its feet, if you could even call them feet, dangled into the music box. How did Larson not see this? Eric thought. These things were massive. <clears throat> Wait, I've been here for an hour, and this hasn't been here. Where had this thing's... Where had this came... Bleh, where had this thing come from? S soon enough, the head of what now seemed to be a puppet in chains slowly turned upwards. Its eyes once again began to glow white. Before long, the puppet was staring right at Eric. You did this to me. Did it just speak? You left me. Yes, it did again. What What did I do to you? Eric tried to hide the fact that he, he was absolutely terrified. But when he said the words, he heard his own fear in his voice. Why was he scared, though? This thing wasn't here before. How was it now? It couldn't be, meaning it was just... It must just be a hallucination or a dream. It couldn't possibly be real. So to test his theory, Eric pinched himself. Ow. This was not a dream. This was real. But how? You left me outside to die. You stabbed me in the... You stabbed me in the chest, but it felt like you stabbed me in the back. I think I meant to say he stabbed me in the chest, referring to William, but uh, I don't know. What? I think that was a mistake. Anyway, what? Eric never did any of this to the puppet. He did it to Charlotte. Wait. No. That's impossible. Charlotte? Yes. I am. But how? I was saved. I felt my spirit lift. I was being rescued. I'd hoped it was by you, but it was by this thing, and we became one. How stupid could I have been to think it was you? You're the reason I died in the first place. Eric didn't understand anything that was going on. He turned away from the puppet. No, no, no. This can't be real. He started to think this was all a huge mistake. He turned back towards the puppet. Where did it go? Where are you? Eric heard the faintest noise. It was coming from the music box. Eric began to walk forward and towards it. Pop goes the weasel. Eric was grabbed and thrown against the wall. The puppet's curling fingers held Eric up high against the wall. Its other hand curled into a fist. You left me, she screamed at him, and then she punched him in the face. She sounded angry. Her massive grin was morphing into a depressed frown. Out there to die, she punched him again. I didn't mean to. The puppet ga gave him another few punches to the face, then threw him to the other side of the room. You stabbed me in the chest. Her pu- Oh no, I think what I was refer- It's weird when you don't even know what you wrote. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I think when when she says you stabbed me in the chest, I'm, uh, she she's supposed to be referring to when she became a zombie or whatever, you know. You stabbed me in the chest. Her punches became more and more aggressive, more and more painful. Was Eric gonna make Eric? Was Eric even gonna make it out of here alive? He felt as if today would be the day he would die. The puppet grabbed Eric's, Eric's neck with both hands. She squeezed his neck t tightly before lifting him into the air, throwing him to the concrete floor. Eric felt one section of, of his leg detach from the other. The only thing connecting the limbs together were the veins and arteries. Soon enough, those may be ripped apart too. Then he might be done for. I've gotten new gifts, you know. The puppet spoke as if out of breath. She was now a large doll. How could she be losing breath? Eric tried to respond. He wanted to ask her what what gift she had, but he couldn't. He, he felt as if he weighed 500 pounds. He had nearly lost his life, it seemed. Even without asking, Eric got an answer to his question. I can detect the condition of spirits. Eric didn't know what that meant, but he once again seemed to get an answer. I can tell when people are going to die soon enough, or when they have died. You, Eric, you are on the verge of death. I'm dead. I'm gonna die. Eric couldn't even walk anymore. He thought his legs he thought his leg would fall off if he tried. Lucky for you, your your brother's friend is about to die. I need to grant him something you may only wish for. What? Was she talking about Jake? He was gonna die? Somehow he managed to get some words out. What will you do? He was weak. He could barely breathe. He could barely speak. I'm gonna transfer his soul into something. He won't stay dead. 
He's going to live forever as a spirit. What was she going to do with Eric? I need to leave, but I'll be back shortly. While I'm gone, you can stay in the music box. His answer had an a his question had an answer again, but he didn't like this answer. The puppet picked him up and carried him over to the music box. She dropped him in and closed the box. Then she went on her way. Eric woke up in just as much pain as she was before, as he was before. He remembered where he was and immediately started shaking and struggling to get out. But he couldn't. He was trapped. Maybe she wouldn't come back. Maybe Larson would come in and find him here. Maybe he, maybe he would let him out. Maybe everything would be okay. As the music boxes above him started to open, Eric felt hope. He thought it could have been someone coming to the rescue, but it was just an illusion. Above him, the puppet giggled. You didn't think I was done with you, did, did you? Eric let out a heavy breath. This was the end. So yeah, that's the last we hear from Eric, guys. And now we're going to cut to Henry. Also over here, what? Was she talking about Jake? He was going to die? This this is what I meant in the last video when I, when I said that this story in this universe, the real Jake takes place in 1993, as does this story in Lonely Freddy. Um, Jake is dying now, okay? And... Eric's brother, uh, your brother's friend, your brother, Brandon's friend, Jake, um, and he, she's going to transfer his soul into something, that obviously being Simon from the real Jake. He's going to live forever as a spirit. Yeah, basically, yeah. So now let's cut to Henry, okay? He was right. Henry sat at his desk alone. When, I, when he says he was right, that's referring to way back in the beginning. Whoops, not there. Um... You're right, I won't even pretend to kn I know what you're going through, but you will. But you will know what I am going through. And that's what that's what Henry is Henry means. He was he was right. I now know what he was going through. That's that's what this line means. Henry sat at his desk alone. Charlotte was usually the one to comfort him when he was upset, but now the fact that she wasn't there to do so was the reason he was. Henry thought about his conversation with Eric before. He knew Eric was a great kid. He understand how he understood how Eric felt about Charlotte. He loved her. Henry knew he would never have done something like this. The accusations toward Eric had been absurd. Henry didn't know what to do. No one was there to comfort him. No one was there to help him find his way. He needed to speak with Eric. He was the only one who loved Charlotte as much as Henry did. The only one who knew how much the only one who knew how much he had loved his daughter. His last shred of hope. When Henry picked up the phone and dialed, his hand shook. A tear rolled down his face. He dragged his hand down his own face as the phone rang, and he waited for Larson to pick up. Officer Larson speaking. Henry took a while to respond. He wasn't sure what to say. It's Henry. Henry, I'm so sorry for your loss. You have my deepest con condolences. Thank you, Duane. Henry shivered. Is there any chance I could speak with Eric, please? There was a long pause before Eric, Lar before Officer Larson said, I'm sorry, Henry. I have some bad news. Henry dropped the phone. His whole life was crumbling before his eyes. Why did this have to happen to him? Henry dropped his face in his hands. Larson still spoke into the phone. Henry? Henry, are you there? Are you still there? Henry, Henry's eyes dripped with tears. He couldn't think. He couldn't breathe. He couldn't even fathom that everyone he cared about was gone. Henry, are you there? Henry mo removed his face from his hands. He briefly searched for a remote. When he found it, he clicked a button and the door opened. There was screaming for a moment, but only for a moment. That there is a reference to the theory that Baby killed Henry in the books? Which is obviously not true, but that it was an old theory, and I I made I made it canon here because there was screaming for a moment, but only for a moment. That was one of Baby's lines in this location. Henry, answer me. As the door closed again, Henry dropped his head onto his desk. Blood pooled on the desk like a puddle in the rain. It was over. Everything he had was gone, and now so was he. 
Henry. And that's the end. I'm actually working on a sequel to this story. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to name it yet, but it's a story about Officer Larson from this story. Uh, he's grieving the loss of Henry, Charlotte, and Eric, basically. And uh, he get, he catches a case where a man murdered his whole family. And this is a reference to um, 1.35 AM's epilogue, where there's a mirror that has seen all this. And basically, this mirror in this in the story is going to be like a reverse ball pit it can send people to memories from the future rather than the past so basically that's what's going to happen um larson is going to f uh, get some tech from the from the memory and then some somehow he's going to get it like he's going to be able to keep it in the real world somehow um he he won't know how but yeah it'll just happen so yeah, um, you'll see what that entails once I'm done that story. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this story. It was fun making it, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like on the video, and if you like my other videos, please do consider subscribing. And yeah, I'll see you guys next video. Episode 7 out, and peace.